Hi folks, Jamie from Cali Creations here. Uh, welcome to my workshop. Uh, purpose of this video is to act as a build diary or build log for the latest project that I'm working on. Uh, now, those of you who may follow my page or are um, on the unofficial Robot Wars page or just general Robot Wars fans, uh, you'll be familiar with the shunt replica that I built in 2018. The plan with it was to keep it a secret keep it under wraps while it was being built and then have a kind of grand unveiling for Robonerd. As a result, I didn't really document the build that much apart from pictures throughout, but I didn't really do anything active during it because I was focused purely on getting it ready in time. So I just had to kind of rush through it a bit. Um, I'm moving on to a new project now. And again, I'm going to keep it a secret until it's ready to unveil, uh, all being well. I'll be unveiling it at Robonerd 2020, which, due to coronavirus, yay, um, has transitioned from a pub gathering event to an online kind of live streaming and pre-recorded interview video event overall thing on the 15th of August this year. Uh, so this project I'm working on, I would like to get that completed by then. Uh, one of the kind of most common questions I got asked after I uploaded pictures of the shunt build was um, Dead Metal When, uh, how about Sergeant Bash, can you build a killer lot? I'm not going to build a killer lot because I don't have the space for it. Uh, I think the, the one in the show, despite it saying 280 kilos on the stat sheet and commonly being accepted as being 520 kilos, is actually around about 700 kilos for the original Sir Killer Lot. Uh, so that's just too big and unyieldy to move about in my van, take to events and so on. Um, I'm not going to build Sergeant Bash, there's a couple of reasons. One might be under wraps at the time of this video airing. Um, another one is that it's a, it's a cool robot, but it's not really one that appeals to me. So I'm not going to be the person that brings back Bash. Hashtag. Everyone, or pretty much everyone knows that one of my favourite house robots, uh, besides Shunt, is dead metal, which is exactly what I'm going to be building. That's right, I'm finally building a dead metal replica. Uh, it's a question that's been asked several times uh, ever since I uploaded the shunt. Uh, construction photos. A lot of people knew it was my favourite house robot and it just seemed to be the next logical step. So, dead metal. Well, we know it's got the pneumatic claws at the front. Uh, many of you will know it's also got an adjustable drive system that raises up and down so that the claws can snare opponents of different sizes. But first and foremost, it's all about the weapon. This thing here. This is a petrol cutoff saw very similar to the one that you that was used by the original dead metal on the show this particular model is where have I put it this is a ts a steel ts 400 saw uh this is quite an old saw you can see it's quite kind of grimy and so on inside i think this is from about 1999 this particular one so it's seen some use uh when i got it second hand on ebay it was covered in concrete dust uh all sorts of dirt that had got inside it so uh, I took a couple of days to strip it all down, um, clean it all out, and it's actually looking not too bad at the moment. Uh, it's slightly different from the one on the show. I think the model of the one on the show was a TS460, was the, the type of uh, still saw they used for that. They're impossible to get now. I think the au you know, auctions for the, the most recent ones were back in 2012, uh, so they've long since been discontinued and very hard to get. The TS400 is what seems to be the closest uh, to the TS460 in terms of shape, look at the front section and so on, all seems to be relatively similar. The rear part of it is a little bit different, but I don't think that'll be a problem for the replica uh, because there's going to be a, a frame that goes around this to support the saw mechanism as it uh, lowers forwards and I think there should be enough space to the back of it that it can... Uh, incorporate the whole the whole engine so that's not a problem. In terms of modifications so far uh, I've basically stripped down the outer shell so that part there that was your throttle handle sat on top but I've taken that out 
and I've installed some electronics here. Uh, the majority of it is as is, stock really, uh, but obviously at the front here we've got the, the guards which I've now made to resemble dead metal. So this orange guard, uh, aluminium it is, on the original stock saw it was uh, designed for a 12 inch cutting blade which is around about 300 millimetres. Uh, dead metal uses a 350 slash uh, millimeter slash 14 inch blade, so we have to extend the guard out. Uh, so most of the the guard that came with it on this side was cut off. I've then um, cut and bolted on some extending metal strips here, just two millimeter mild steel uh, onto the guard, which allows for this curved section, which is also two millimeter uh, mild steel, uh, to form the necessary diameter for a 14 inch blade. Uh, so we've also got the wire mesh uh, tack welded on here and on the other side of the saw we've just got the mesh taking up just under half of the, the diameter of the, uh, of the blade there uh, just to act as another bit of protection. In terms of components that I'll be using uh, on this replica of dead metal uh, for drive, first of all, I'll be using electric scooter motors, uh, which is the same as I use in Shunt and in my heavyweight robot Coyote. Uh, in terms of drive wheels, it's the same as Shunt again, which are these 12 inch cart tires. Uh, they're quite narrow, but they're similar uh, to rental carts. So if you go to Butlins or you know theme parks, that have got go karts, which aren't your typical um, kind of racing carts. They tend to have these wheels on them. Uh, I think they're a bit more sturdy and durable than traditional uh, 10 inch cart tyres and it seems to be the diameter that all the original house robots ran on. Um, so I'll one of these either side of the saw um, on a kind of in a frame which the motor attaches to. The motor then goes through a two stage uh, reduction. First of all timing pulleys and belts uh, to an intermediate stage and then a sprocket and chain from the intermediate stage to the wheel. In terms of battery power, the original house robots all ran on sealed lead acid batteries which are very large and very heavy. I don't want that because dead metal and shunt will be quite often transported in my van, going to comic con events or robot events and I don't really want something that I'm going to have to break my back to lift. Shunt runs on a lithium polymer battery pack, 6 cell, which is about 22.2 two, uh, volts, and that's the size of it. I think it weighs about a kilo or so. Uh, these are actually the same batteries that power Coyote as well. These offer great power to weight uh, ratio. The, you can get a huge amount of current out of them, and you only need a battery that size to power a heavyweight or a house robot. Uh, so that'll be in dead metal which will leave a bit of space at the back, which is where his batteries were, but it'll make it lighter to carry, so that's fine. In terms of control as well, the original house robots ran Vantech speed controllers. I'll probably go for something similar for Dead Metal. Uh, Dead Metal's got a lot of pneumatics going on. It's got the two rams for the wheel, it's got a ram for the claws, and actually uses two pneumatic rams to move the saw forward and back. That'll be about three valves in total, I think, possibly four. That's pretty much the, the main components in dead metal. Obviously a lot of its aesthetic is external, so it's got the exoskeleton, it's got the kind of pipes that come up over the shoulders, uh, the, the kind of shroud that sits over the saw as well, so it's going to be quite tricky to make all that. Shunt was quite handy in the sense that it had the fiberglass shell that sits over the kind of central part of the robot. Because that was a, a mould from the BBC, that was the size that Shunt was. So I was able to use that as a reference point for the chassis, uh, also for locating the wheels and the shell had mouldings on it for the plates which supported the uh, arms that mounted the bucket and the plough. Dead Metal doesn't have a fiberglass shell, so I'm going to have to guess a lot of it from pictures and videos. I think it's going to be a lot of cardboard aided design used to maybe make the claws and see how they look or make parts of the chassis. I have started a CAD of Dead Metal so I can also rejig things in there and see if they look okay but a lot of it's going to be guesswork so there might be a few things on it that look a bit more disproportioned compared to shunt but I'm going to give it my damn best shot and see how it goes.
So going forward, I've got some box section ordered for making the frame for the saw. I want to get a lot of stuff completed in CAD and sent off to a company to have water jet cut or plasma cut or laser cut just to save a lot of time rather than me doing it all with an angle grinder and annoying the neighbours with noise. And then once I've got that, work on maybe the drive pods next to get them up and running, get them mounted to a chassis, get the claws cut and then worry about all the exoskeleton and so on. It's currently the 20th of June today. So I've got just under two months to get this up and running if I want to get it done in time for RoboNerds. At that point, I shall leave you and go and do some work. Until next time, see you later.